began holding services in Madison, South Dakota. That, of course, would be last year's vicar, Reshke. Okay. All right, got, everyone's with me. Am I, am I going too fast? <laughs> take a look at okay this I had my left knee replaced when this vicar was here vicar Stibbs Stibbs is not the correct answer Did, didn't you guys read the material before you came? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was during Vicar Schmidt's oh, era. Okay. All right, 2011. Yeah, see, that's why I was specific. Okay. We had our first ever VBS. That was when Vicar Holman was here. <laughs> Pastor and Sue were having the new vicar over for a meal. Seth greeted him at the door and asked, how come women can't be passed? <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story, by the way. <laughs> and I'll give him credit, he had a pretty good response. He said, ask your dad. <laughs> That was our first vicar, Peter Sternberg. <laughs> and I think he wondered, what am I getting into? <laughs> okay, Pastor had his right knee replaced and operated on again within a few weeks due to infection. Stibbs. Yeah, that was vicar Stibbs. Matt Stills in that era. The vicar got married while he was a vicar. Vicar Schultz. Josh Schultz. And most of you have heard that story. I, I think when he asked me on assignment day, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> would it would be okay? Uh, and I said, yeah, what day of the week are you getting married? And he said, Saturday. I said, that's fine, you can preach on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> this vicar purchased and rode a motorcycle while here. Oh, dolly. Was it Dolly? Not Vicar Dowling. Yeah, James Backus. He actually went up to Watertown and took uh, the, the safety course for motorcycles um, when he got it. So, yep, continued to, to do that. He was the first vicar that had to pay some rent while vicaring. So the background here, so this is going to kind of date when it is. Uh, some of our first vicars, when I would meet them on assignment day, I would hand them the paperwork for government housing and say, you need to fill this out, you need to fill it out and get back to me by the end of the week, basically. And they would do that. And then usually by the time the 1st of August rolled around, they qualified for government housing. Okay? And uh, it all... so. I, Still waiting for the end. I'm, I'm yeah. giving you time to think this through, them, but no one has given me the answer yet. I even helped move them up there. Was it Rogus? It was not Rogus. Oh, okay. He still got free housing. Um, he had the blessing because he had two kids, too. But that was a, a blessing. So what changed was the government, how they viewed the stipend that the vicar got. And it happened part of the way through Vicar Arnold's year, so he had to start paying some rent. Um, and then from there, then we transitioned to uh, um, an apartment for a couple of years, and then eventually to the student center. We had our second VBS using SDSU Wellness Center during this vicar's era. Swanson? It was Vicar Swanson, yeah. Oh, Vicar Schmidt got it started though, right? What's that? Didn't Vicar Schmidt get his Yeah, Vicar Schmidt did the first one. Okay. Pastor had his right knee taken out and was without a knee for nine months. Vicar Eckert. Yeah, Alexander Eckert during his time here. I went from October to June, and then they put the second knee in my right knee at that time. 
his wife had a baby while they were here. Bacchuses were expecting when they left. By the way, a, a vicar could be used more than once, so just so we're clear, if you're checking them off in your mental liners. <laughs> Joel McKinney yeah. had their first when they were just before they left in the first part of August. And they went to Lake Benton, right? He was a tutor for two years at Michigan Lutheran Seminary before going to be assigned at Lake Benton. Pastor McKinney was. He did a lot of work for his senior year while he was vicaring. Yeah, Rogus. Uh, yeah. Um, your senior year, you uh, have Isaiah, or Isaiah 40 to 66 for translation kind of stuff. He had it all done before he went back. But our our pastors in our conference gave him all kinds of grief because conference, I think, was in Montana that year. And on the way out there, he was sitting in the back of the van translating Isaiah. <laughs> gave him merciless grief. <laughs> and rightly so. Rightly so. <laughs> This vicar actually preached for a mission festival and did a presentation on some of his mission experiences. That was Vicar Dowling. They had spent that year in China. Okay. And uh, I don't know how many languages he dabbles in now. Every once in a while I hear from him. But he is in a good location for that in Canada where there are a lot of people speaking different languages around him. Because of how the church events fell on the calendar, this vicar got to watch many of the Jackrabbit men's home basketball games during Nate Walter's senior year. Oh. Which was right in his wheelhouse because he is actually a, an avid sports fan. That is Tyler Shinnick. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, I think people will get this one. He secretly dated someone in the congregation and then later would marry this young lady. Yeah. Now, take a look at this guy with hair. Because he doesn't have much now. If you've seen Vicar Tim Borman. He was the last vicar not to live in the student center. After him, they started living in the student center. It was Arnold. Vicar Arnold? No. It was not Vicar Arnold. Tom Moldenhauer. So we had Vickers for two years lived over here. The McKinney's and Moldenhauer's lived just kitty corner here up in the apartment building. And uh, Vicar McKinney would tell the story that he just didn't believe how cold it got until he had to walk home from church like two blocks. <laughs> when it was blowing a bazillion miles. <laughs> the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl while he was a vicar. Oh, you're killing me. Who wants to remember that? Uh, <laughs> a repeat here, we have Brian Schmidt. Yeah. Packers. 2011, they won the Super Bowl. COVID-19 first struck and paralyzed the country in many ways. Yeah, yeah this is what Vicar Rothfuss will be known for. The Vicar trivia down the years from now. But I, I, I do have one more that I think we probably ought to take a look at. Name that Vicar. The Vikings won the Super Bowl while he was a Vicar. <laughs> That's why we're still getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rhonda Leans has uh, something that she would like to give to Vicar here. This is this is kind of the intermission a little bit, so um, to uh, give to Vicar on behalf of the LWMS. Hello. I I was supposed to give a little speech, so I didn't write anything down, so it's just going to be impromptu. We really, really enjoyed having you here this year. It's kind of a strange year. It's hard to get to know everybody, but 
We had Vicar out at our house and he is a champion at playing apples to apples freestyle. I think he won every round and it was his, he said it was his first time playing. Oh, I told the normal game just not that one. <laughs> anyway, you've done a great job as our Vicar. We've enjoyed, we enjoyed VBS. I had the grandkids over for a week. We enjoyed it, watched it every day and did all, this, all the stuff. So on behalf of LWMS, to say thank you for your service, we are presenting you with this gift. Thank you, Rhonda. All right, anyone need to stand a stretch? Everyone's doing all right? Okay, we got the year in review. Going back to, as Vicar alluded to in his sermon this morning, a hot day at the seminary gymnasium auditorium. Uh, we've heard this before, we named it the Prophet, Priest, and King Dome. When we were there because my senior year was the first year that we got to use this new facility. But uh, it's kind of cool, up in the front there, in the chancel, the altar area, there are these two stained glass windows. One, speak, your servant is listening. And that, of course, is being into the word of God. And the um, vine create spiritus, and that is come Holy Spirit. And then the third window, I should say, is here am I, send me. And Tiffany played a wonderful little piece during the offertory today, reminding us of that, um, our part in, in sending and preparing called workers for our Wisconsin Senate. So we go back to the date is May 23rd, 2019, and the Midler class, along with everyone else, is crammed there, a couple thousand people in the auditorium, and the congregations all over the United States and Canada wanna know who's gonna be their next vicar, and so as Vicar said today, his name is Red, and in a matter of uh, about six seconds, your whole life changes for an entire year. And now we will go through and review and order the vicars we have had. Our first vicar, of course, was. And then we had. Bacchus. And then we had. Rogus. And then we had. Foreman. And now it gets a little fuzzy. Arnold. Bill Arnold. And then. Now, I gave you all these wonderful hints. That's why we had the name that Becker thing earlier. <laughs> we all would do well in this. Joel McKinney, and then Tom Molgenauer, Brian Schmidt, oh, second column, Keegan Dowling, Tyler Schinnick, Scott Schultz, Monson, Stibbs, Eckert, yeah, now everyone knows these. Holman and Reschke, and then the 17th one, Caleb. Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> right. This was assignment day that day. There were a couple of other cronies from his class who were also assigned to our district. Uh, Vicar Cuck, who was out in Billings, and Vicar Schrader. Now, here we see the hand of God with COVID. Because all three of these guys were supposed to be on a bus going to the International Youth Rally together. And so we can see God probably intervened to prevent trouble from happening. <laughs> <laughs> we met Vicar's parents that day in the auditorium as uh, the proclamation is here am I send me. Where? To Brookings, South Dakota. Where? They took it out a map and you have to look and see to our Savior Lutheran Church. And so we were happy to welcome him to our congregation. And again, a little crew that helped get it all ready for you, the cleaning crew, Maynard and his girls there. <laughs> and that happening every year. And you made a lot of people happy this year. Sometimes we have a pretty good moving crew for our vicars. This was from Holman's a couple of years ago. The moving crew this last fall when he came, you're looking at him. <laughs> but we got it done. We got it done. 919 9th Avenue, the Wells Student Center, the home of our Rickers, ever since the Schmitz have been there, but there's always been activity. Uh, Vicker had a lot of family here that weekend. Uh, his mom and dad were able to make it over, 
as well as some other people. In fact, he was surprised that day too. Uh, it's one of the biggest crowds we've had as far as a uh, bigger installation goes, but it was your boss who I think that surprised you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> when he came um, and because he was moving someone into Mankato? His daughter. Daughter. And he actually heard this morning on the live stream that I have a couple weeks off. He said, when are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, and so the year of service begins. And we, as you know, kind of throw the vicars in and, and get their feet wet a little bit. Uh, obviously, the campus ministry is a part. But many of you don't know this, but Vicar Rothfuss is pretty high maintenance. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, you know, he's, he's, he's done now, so we can reveal this truth. High maintenance. So he gets here and he goes, you know, no pastor, it's my birthday. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. And, you know, usually I like to have cake for my birthday. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, well, let's see what we can do. So um, we quickly send out some invitations and gather a little crowd so that Vicar could celebrate on his birthday. Now again, I say he's high maintenance. <laughs> so then he, he caught me after that Friday night fellowship and he said, well, you know, Pastor, usually when I'm at home, my family throws me two parties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see what we can do. So, sure enough, Sunday we had to have another day. <laughs> But yeah, it, getting into some things, obviously, I don't know what we're going to do, uh, our opening picnic up at the suit. I don't know what we're going to do next year. I mean, like in a couple of weeks here, because there's no state fair booth this year. But maybe I'm just going to have to pack the vicar up, and for the sake of continuing with his picture, of you know, driving over to Huron and saying, here's what we got to do, vicar. Uh, again, vicar's pretty high maintenance. He says, I like a lot of publicity. <laughs> so, you might remember I, I called in all of my favors that to the forward, I, you know, I've written articles for the Forward in Christ magazine over the years, and I called in all my favors so that Vicar could be in the Forward in Christ magazine. If you go back to, I think it was a January, February issue, um, this picture I think was the one that was in there. So, some new experiences for our vicar. Um, the opportunity to be with other fellow uh, servants of the gospel. We have our annual picnic in the fall of the year. Again, probably not going to happen this Labor Day. Uh, we had a football outing this year where some members of our congregation could sign up to go to a Jacks game. Our student expo, again, probably not going to happen this year. We'll have to figure out another way to try to track down some of our students. Um, most of our vicars have not had a lot of experience with our new friends program, working with people with disabilities, our college students, of course, the three bar lunch. We're still hoping to have something this year, not quite sure what it'll be. Um, teaching little lambs, a one of a kind experience, at least up in the history of South Dakota State, was when game day came to uh, the university campus this last fall. And um, the vicar got out of going to a LWMS rally that day so that he could <laughs> go to game day. And, and Vicar Schrader came down from Watertown too. But being involved in ministry, uh, serving, having a little fun all the way while we do that. And our Thanksgiving meal last year as we gathered here um, Advent tea, I think, might have been a somewhat new event for you. Our, our uh, walking in the parade route for Festival of Lights, the crew that we had for doing that. Christmas for kids, um, being a part of the LWMS meetings, and then also their great support that we have for missions. Uh, I was so thankful I had taken this picture before March, Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Bible study, and so unfortunately we had to stop meeting but many different things to do along the way. Um, that thanks to, it, and I, I'm just gonna I'll give a shout out to this young lady sitting in front of me here, Danielle, uh, is instrumental in getting a collegiate group going that we would meet in Sioux Falls. Uh, we met twice a year ago, and then um, twice this fall, and twice right after Christmas, and we're going again for March, but then that all came to a screeching halt. Uh, Vicar had some visitors during the year. His sister and brother-in-law were able to be here at Christmas time for a little bit, but and, and that was good. But this is what really brought a smile to his face. 
And you heard it today again that he just recently is engaged to Amanda. We wish them God's blessings. And Amanda was able to come out and partake of the annual feast at the Cooks, the seven course meal that they put on. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty good this year, Bev. Maybe you want to try again next year. And we'll... <laughs> oh, it's always, it's always good. This is, one of the, this is one of the perks of being the supervising pastor. <laughs> Other than today, um, the last activity we had here at church that would be this big was actually when our collegians served for Lent. And then the following Sunday, everything shut down. Um, rather quickly uh, following that. And this became then kind of the new norm for us. Uh, again, Bev Cook making, um, I don't know how many dozens of masks that Bev ended up making, but they all disappeared slowly but surely here from our congregation. Again, Vicar kind of high maintenance. If you take a look at him, I'm gonna say he's kind of a pretty boy. <laughs> so he would come in after about a week or two of this COVID stuff, and he would pace, and he would pace, and I would say, yeah, what's going on there? He says, ah, man, I need to get my hair cut. <laughs> so we found him a barber. Yeah, the most beautiful barber in the world, by the way. <laughs> Our church foyer there has many functions. <laughs> by the looks of that. Yeah, COVID, COVID kind of got us off our game in a lot of ways. Vicar got a little confused. He thought maybe he could play hockey in church. <laughs> and, you know, just to be fair to him, it wasn't just him that got caught off his game. I got caught off my game too. I don't know what I was thinking, that I let the vicar wear white once in church. <laughs> But it, it, it was tough. It was tough uh, uh, preaching to an empty <laughs> congregation. But ministry still continued. It continued because the spirit can't be bound, can he? Uh, the spirit can't be bound because we still had baptisms. Uh, we had a number of private ones. We resumed Bible study here a while back using technology, our 7 a.m. Zoom Bible study. Uh, there were some things that didn't happen, unfortunately. It would have been a neat experience for Vicar to go to an international youth rally with some of our young people. Um, they're, they're always a fun deal. Uh, we look forward to in May when we kind of had live people in church again um, for worship when we held confirmation. But again, uh, the gospel continues to be proclaimed, and now we're happy to be back to this kind of situation where we have more people coming to church again and, and three services. But along the way, I think Vicar had a little fun during his year, experiencing a wide variety of things, serving people, very little people, <laughs> people who are still growing in their faith. And um, this, is, uh, this is actually Dr. Palmer's classroom down in Madison uh, that we meet in there when we were able to meet at Dakota State University. And uh, last time here, we went down to Madison. We met in the garage of the Cradivilles. And we're going to be going down again in August to kind of get things going again. But it's all about the word of Jesus, isn't it? It's about people coming to learn about the great things that God has done for us. Again, uh, um, our Google Hangouts Bible study, and here's Sean and Danielle, who are with us today, um, participated from down in Vermilion uh, with we met up on campus. Our new friends group, so that people can come and learn. And then they can go and share. Go and share the great things that our Savior has done for us. And from little on, and the end of May, we had an outdoor service in Madison because uh, we just wanted to get the group going again. And then to honor and serve. Um, people, many people who give up their time and talents here at our congregation <coughs> so that the service to the Lord and the proclamation of the gospel can continue. Like these young people who took on uh, the three bar lunch last year, or our current church council as they serve Jesus. And even Vicar gets his hands dirty there too, a little bit. And why? Because we have the wonderful news, don't we? Of peace through Jesus. And what we wanna do is to know it, 
and to live it and to share it. And with that, we thank you for serving us and God's blessings to you, Vicar. <laughs>